We're ready to begin since it is tonight is Chavbeis. Today is, was Chavbeis Shvat, and in the Yonim of Kotshim, the night goes after the day. So the uh, it's the Rebetzin's Yorzeit. It's 21 years since the Rebetzin was Nestalik, where he passed away. Uh, the Rebetzin, the wife of the Rebbe, um, in 1988. There are many different stories that that we hear about, that we that we read, we heard about the Rebetzin. There's a story that happened with my father. My father was a physician by the Rebetzin um, uh, over the course of about 40 years. In the Rebbe's house, the position for the Rebbe, from the, the previous Rebbe in the last years of his, of, uh, of, of, uh, the la in the late 40s. And from the Rebbe, the, over the course of the years, and from the different Rebetzins, the Rebbe's in Hana, the Rebbe's mother, the Rebbe's mother-in-law, the Rebbe's in and the Rebbe's wife. There's a story that the Rebetzin shared with my mother. Uh, interesting experience, but it gives out a lot, uh, a very deep insight about the Rebetzin's personality. The Rebetzin would speak quite often with my mother from time to time. She would call. I mean, I would pick up the phone also. This is Mrs. Schneerson. And uh, she would push a call to ask for my father. There's one time that she spoke with my mother, which, which in general, if she would have a conversation, can go on for 10, 15 minutes. She spoke with my mother, and she told my mother that it was one time while she was driving on Eastern Parkway or on uh, Kingston Avenue, uh, she saw my father walking, and he was engrossed in thought, and she figured that he was not in a good mood, that he was depressed or there was a certain, uh, he was under pressure. She felt that he was, he was, you know, that he needed a little uh, pep up, he needed a little encouragement, he needed a little chizuk. And she was ready, this is how she said it, she was ready to go out, stop the car, go out of the car to speak with him. Same moment, another thought dawned on the Rebetzin. That it could be that it's not that he's upset or he's, he, he, he feels pressure, but he's engrossed in, the th in his thoughts. And the Rebetzin said, if I will go out, I will disturb him. And therefore, the Rebetzin says, better to stay away. It's interesting. I mean, one of the things we derive from the Rebetzin is the, the consideration, and the, the concern, and the deep consideration that everything she did, there was a thought before it. Everything was, in, was, was thought over. It wasn't like spontaneous. She dropped a word. She slipped a word. Uh, she did something without... A, there's no such thing by the Rebetzin. The Rebetzin counted her words. The Rebetzin spoke, Mama, she counted words when she would speak with people low key, uh, uh, everything was with thought. You can see that every word she, she said, she was thinking before she said it. You can see on her face, she is thinking, you know, what to say and how to say and how much to say. It was amazing. It was mamish poshet, like, I mean, if we translate it in poshet words or chsidish words, it's called a pnimistika yit. Pnimistika chosset. Someone as the Rebbe Rashab writes in Al Kuntres Atfila, the Rebbe Rashab, who is the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, writes in Kuntres Atfila. He writes that the union of that a person should think before they do something. Before they do something, they should think. Before they say something, he says, and everything should be accounted for. There shouldn't be, he says a very interesting lesson, a person should not do something without thinking, with hasa not, not one tenuah should be, not one move should be without thinking. And this is basically the, the consideration that, uh, I mean, that we saw by the rabbits in, in, in every part. That's how the rabbits hosted guests. And that's how the rabbits uh, had conversations with them. Everything was just with say, consideration. I mean, at another point, it was at the time during the war of Yom Kippur. The rabbits said, I would, I would like to ask you about, about that Yisrael. It was a guest from Israel. But the rabbits said, there's a war going on, and it'll just bring concern. You'll get worried about your family in Israel, so I, I decided I don't want to discuss it. Because of consideration for, the, for people. Okay, we're going to go on now. We're up to Sif Yud Gimel in the Maimer, which is the Maimer Bossi Ligani, which is the uh, Maimer that the Rebbe, the Hasidic discourse that the Rebbe delivered on the 10th of Shvat, 5729, 1969, elaborating on chapter 19 of the series of Maimorim Hasidic discourses that the previous Rebbe released for the day of his passing on the 10th of Shvat, 1950. So every year the Rebbe would customarily explain, elaborate and explain and mention quotes from all the different Chabad leaders 
explaining the uh, chapter which uh, corresponds to that year. Now we're up to the third, uh, thirteenth <coughs> chapter in this Hasidic discourse, concentrating on chapter nineteen. So the Rebbe says, "Umam shich ba maimer." The previous Rebbe continues in the maimer. The Isa be medrash that it says in the medrash in anthology, the nimes be mincha netzach, which is as we mentioned in the previous week. Nimes is the you know pleasantness be mincha, but you write in your right hand netzach zehalul of shenikach be min. When we say the right hand and we say victorious, so this refers to the lulav, which is taken in the right hand. Which is taken on sukkahs, four different uh, species that are taken, and the mela the lulav is the tallest one of them, and it is taken in the right hand. Shall yedeza hanetzochenu begiloy. Then when we say bimincha on the right hand, this relates to netzach, which is being victorious, because lulav connects with netzachen, with victory, as the Rebbe quotes further from the medrash. Okay, the isha be medrash. Moshe l'shnayim shenichnas oetzal adayin. That it's a muscle for two people that went into a, to a, a judge. We don't know who is going to be the winner. Whoever will hold the lulav and the hados in his hand, we know he is the uh, victorious one. The same thing is also Yidin, the Jewish nation. Other nations go in. To, to, into the court, into the judgment, which is the day of judgment, Rosh Hashanah. And when do we know who was victorious? When you didn't take the lulav on the first day of Sukkot, we know that they were victorious. So Mela, this is the connection between taking the right hand, that it's, that it's taken in the right hand, and it shows on the union of victory. Yeshleimar, so the Rebbe, the Rebbe explains why does the previous Rebbe bring this union? Yeshleimar, the Zesh, may be my medrash. Veleis Anan Yadin Manunitseyach, that what he brings from the medrash, that we don't know who is victorious, who can who can make even a calling in Anitzachon, Lonatseyach, Hasamanagit. That says the Medrash in anthology says that we don't know who was the victorious one. The reason for that is because Kol Masha Menaget the Betekev Yeser, the more that a Menaget, the enemy, is stronger, Hanetzachnu Beyeser, the victory is more significant. maybe by Maimer Leisas Anan Yadin Chulo, therefore it brings also in the Maimer in the Hasidic discourse of the previous Rebbe that it's a situation that we don't know who's victorious. The Menaget, the enemy, is so strong that there could even be doubts that he might be victorious, God forbid. Shas were victorious against the enemy as he is in his fullest strength, so then it is a true and essential significant victory. Yeah. Maybe I don't understand this, but it sounds like you're saying an apple tree and a, and a, and a uh, telephone pole have a based in. The one that grows apples on it is the victory. It's going to be the this one. It's not an apple tree or, or, a, be- or, a, or a, a fig tree. It is two different people that go into the judge, and there is a quarrel, and then the judge gives his verdict, and whoever takes out this leaf, what, this what plant... What the Goyim have to move in this road? This is what we take every other. I mean to say... Uh, okay, so, this, so that's why. It's in the Moshul, it has a Shaykhaz. But in the Nimshul... It doesn't have the a shaykh. The sounds like it's a setup. It's a setup. In the mushal it is that whoever comes out with a certain plant is a... We, 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 we have this plant because we're commanded to. They have no shaykhs to it. So why would they even... Why would you even think they're going to have one? <sighs> we are commanded and have it every year. Right. Okay, but good. But the medrash gives a mushal, it connects it with a mushal. You have to look up Amos in the Moshe because the Rebbe quotes a very brief what, what, what exactly happens here. <laughs> 